Hello, this is Gary again, and I have another video for you today. Today, I will be doing a review of the product that you see me using. It is called a blending board, and it is used for blending different wools together um, or various fibers together to create a special effect. Um, and I'll be doing the review, but I wanted to show you a sped up version of how it works before we get started. Um, I'm going to be showing you the unboxing and the items that come in this particular brand. You can get them in various brands. There's even a bunch of websites that can show you how to make it yourself. But I got this from Ashford. And Ashford always does a great job of including everything that you will possibly need. All right, so in the sped up version that you just saw, you saw me actually using this blending board. Um, for those of you who might not know, a blending board is essentially a giant dog brush. I don't know if you can see, but the teeth are very similar to a dog brush. And it's just taking that fabric um, with teeth spaced a certain amount of distance and certain strength on the teeth. And they've taken that into just a giant sheet and taped it onto a wood uh, panel with a handle and um, you use this for blending the wools as you brush them in just like you saw you can brush them in you can blend colors this way you can add special effects this way um, and you're actually going to see me a slow down version of the video that you just saw make another sheet and i will talk you through a little bit more slowly in that process of actually the the blending itself but i wanted to show you this board um, you can actually make your own you don't have to buy one there are websites that sell that just a sheet and you can use like a cutting board or whatever but i wanted to get this super fancy one because um i tried to make one and it really didn't work out so i like this um, the way that this is set up here, it has a handle for easy carry and I do use this handle a lot. It comes with in the back, you can see here, um, it comes with this here that you can actually unscrew and you can put it in here or in here depending on where you want it as well as you can put it at an angle or even this way so you can place it between your legs and work between your legs so you don't have to actually work at a table if you don't want to work at a table but i like to work at a table and i like to have it this way um, although when i'm not filming i actually put it in this hole because it's a little bit easier to see what i'm doing but since i'm filming it'll be easier for you guys if i have it here and it's a little bit more flat um, when you put it in the middle hole, it gets a little bit more elevated. Um, anyway, so the other thing that it comes with, actually it comes with this, this sheet here, this little piece of cardboard that I actually found really helpful because um, then I can store it or as well as putting it underneath. That's one thing I really like about Ashford is they do a great job of thinking about everything that you're going to need, even things that you didn't know you're going to need. So I like this brand. Their stuff isn't the cheapest, but I like this brand because they just go out of their way to just include everything you absolutely need. They also include this brush, which is very similar to a dog brush, has um, the same wood handle that's already been laminated. Um, so you can just get it and start using it right away. Um, this is very easy to hold and works really, really well. They sell a longer version of this. Um, so if yours didn't include, if uh, you got one from a different brand and it didn't include it, I know some people have said that theirs came with a paintbrush and I have seen that. And it basically comes with like a giant four inch um, acrylic paintbrush. And I really don't like that idea because those bristles are very stiff. If you've ever used acrylic paint, those bristles are very stiff. And I'm going to be working with silk and merino and just some really fancy wools. And I do not want that on there. Whereas this is definitely not going to harm the wool at all. So that's really good. It also comes with these dowels that you need to actually lift up the wool from the base. And um, when I get towards the end of the project, I'm just going to show you. Um, there's a couple of different ways to remove the wool from here once you've already applied it so without further ado i figure we stop right here i'm gonna speed it up and do some voiceover work and just show you what it's gonna look like with a voiceover all right so this is the actual blending um i just want to show you the fibers that i have this is um this is uh merino i think was the first one this one is just white merino 
that's white merino that's blended merino and this is tussa silk and um, I'm going to be blending them all together to use actually what this yarn is going to be is it's going to be the accent yarn for a sweater that I'm making um, and so one thing you'll see is what I prefer to do is to work in thin thin layers and some people work in much thicker layers than I do um, I like to start with a base of something like merino or some kind of just plain wool nothing too fancy in the lower level even though this wool is dyed it's still just plain wool you can have a lot of things you can use like uh, noils which are bits of silk you can use leftover um, bits of yarn you can use pretty much anything that you can imagine um, but what I like to do is I like to have silk be you know at the top because then that way silk will be more visible on the outside if you put it at the bottom first if that makes any sense but I can't really put it at the bottom first because like I said you really need to have some kind of wool at the bottom so silk then becomes the second layer and as you saw before I'm still even though I'm working with silk I'm still trying really hard to keep to thin layers and when you're doing that with silk it's a little bit harder and it takes a little longer but I think it's worth it because if you do thick thick layers especially with silk you end up just getting just like long sections of silk and it doesn't really get blended in um, and you see I'd used the brush when I did the wool first and then when I went over with the silk I didn't use the brush right away because I don't like to use the brush right on silk I like to go over it with another layer of wool um, and I don't really want to change the color of this base that much so I'm just mixing the the pre-dyed uh, merino wool with um, with silk and um, an undyed merino because I definitely want to try to keep the colors but you can do things like put in a variety of colors some people will put one color just on the top a co another color in the middle and another color at the bottom and then rinse and repeat um, but for this project I wanted it to be just one um, just one solid color and I believe that this here is the um, the merino this is 19 micron so very very fine merino um, almost as fine as some as some cashmere um, and once again, I want to go over it with a little bit of the, the dyed merino, which is going to be my base. This is um, just going to be the, the main color and the, the white merino and the silk is just there as an accent. And the other thing that I really like about this blending board is um, I didn't have it here, but it came with a little bit of a, like a metal sandpaper so that you're able to file down the the tines the teeth of the of these because when you first get them the teeth are really really sharp and so having um that little bit of included sand this uh, metal sandpaper was really really good and really helpful for me so that i can touch it directly sometimes people get these boards and you can't really touch it directly with this one because of you know how i gently sanded it down when i first got it i can touch it directly and when you first get it and you get that and you decide to get this brand you get that sandpaper you want to use some waste wool you don't want to use your finest cashmere you want to use something that you're not going to um that you know you were going to toss anyway or something like that so you don't want to use your finest uh your finest uh your finest cashmere and your silk when you first get it um so that's so that's another little trick but this again is silk and you'll see me throughout this um that's part of how you get the blending and you're thinking well you're just laying the colors down how are you getting the blending well part of how you get the blending is that you do these um these layers and uh, as i said you can do different colors in your layers some people will like to do a different color you see how i pick that out because um, I had put in just too much and I and I had a feeling that when I go to spin it it's gonna come out as a blob this way um, I, it's easier in this part to to take my time and go slowly here because if I rush here when I go to spin it it's gonna show and you're gonna get big just giant clumps and they're not gonna be fun to spin um, but if I do it this way I can take my time and I can do um, I can do this really slow this is um, this is at about 2x 
and I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but just getting all the wool on here took about 25 minutes just to get all the different layers of the silk and all that. Um, and that seems like a lot for just preparing yarn to spin, but it's really worth it because then when you, when you make it, you get exactly what you want to get and there's no, you know, there's no surprises. You know exactly what you're going to get. You can control, um, the way that it's going to be if like let's make pretend that these were different colors you could make something like a color sandwich where you have you know all of one color and then all of another color and then all of another color um, but the way that i'm doing it here this is just a sort of a, a um this is just um the way that i that i want it to be and um uh, so yeah, so this was, I think this was another layer of silk. No, that was Merino. This is the silk and the silk that I'm using is a Tussa silk. So it's a shorter sort of yellower silk Tussa. The color of the Tussa silk can definitely vary, but this is uh this is a more, uh, sort of off white cream Tussa. Um, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit shorter fiber length than a, um, than a different, uh, than, uh, what is it? Mulberry. I'm sorry. Mulberry is a very white, uh, very uniform silk. This is more of a uh, rustic, let's just say a rustic kind of silk. And I really like that. That's going to give this a really nice, um, a nice tone. Um, so anyway, so I'm going to see if I can make this go a little faster for you guys. Um, but if not, I'll let a little bit of it play and then we will get to the, the next section. But like I said, I, I think one of the tricks here to having a really successful, um, blending board experience is to use those thin, thin layers and to just keep going over and over again. You saw how I had the, I put the blue wool in and I felt like I wasn't getting enough coverage rather than using, I went in there with several thinner layers to get the result that I wanted. All right. Having finished all of it, um, you can see it's kind of, it's packed a little bit more than it probably should be. Um, I might've overpacked it a little bit. Um, you can hear how loud it is and, and why I don't do it. You can kind of see that it's a little overpacked there, but, um, that's okay. So there are a number of ways to remove this from the thing. Um, you can just remove it as one giant piece and spin from it. You can also take something called a Diz and put the fiber through the hole and then you put it and it comes out like one giant continuous string. So you go this way and then you go this way and then you go this way and it pulls it out as one long continuous uh, roving. That's very similar kind of to this, although this is top, but it's the, the similar kind of a thing where it's one long piece. Um, some people will roll it up into one giant thing, but the thing that you saw me do in the video and that you will see me do shortly is making a number of smaller row legs. This is, you can see here from the bottom, this is a little bit overpacked and you can see how much fiber is here. Um, I like to do, um, depending on this is extra packed. So I'm going to try to do five row legs out of this, but I try to usually not have it so packed that I need to do that many. Um, so I am going to do the Rolex and then uh, put in my final words. Oh, but before I start the Rolex, I just thought I would give you a couple of things that I totally forgot about. Um, when you put them on, I usually start it at the bottom. So it goes underneath the fiber and then the other stick goes on top and you roll up. So the other thing you want to keep in mind as you do this is right here on this end here on this end here, uh, is to make sure that they're not exactly aligned. Cause if they're both exactly the same, it's going to be very difficult to pull it apart. So you have them kind of like this, where one is a little bit further out than the other and you go up and that's how it's done. Um, but it takes a little bit longer than it should. So I'm going to pause the video now and do it in high speed.
And we are done. This is them rolled up. Um, you know, sometimes plans don't work out the way I wanted. These are a little bit bigger than they normally should be. Because, like I said, I overpacked this a little bit. Um, some people don't mind that. I really don't like it to be so overpacked. I'd rather make more of these. But the four is just what it likes to be. So here they are. And you spin them from you spin them from the end and um, I will hopefully end with a little picture or mini video of them on a bobbin. <laughs>